Well, hello there. It's Sandy Alnock, and it is time to refresh my palette, and I'm going to talk about what colors I picked and why. I'm excited that I finally feel like I know enough to change out my palette. This is my old colors from the last couple years. You can see some of the colors made it into the new palette and these were left behind at least for a while. And this is the new palette, all nice and clean and shiny. And these are the colors. I'll go through them. Cobalt Teal Blue, gorgeous granulation, and I like the color. And the Iridescent Electric Blue, is really pretty as well. It's gonna be really fun to play with. The next blue is a cobalt blue, and I like it with using it with uh, Burnt Sienna. French Ultramarine and Thalo Blue Green Shade are from the Six Essential set, and I have lots of those in here. Indian Throne Blue has made it in from my last palette. Nice dark blue makes a nice rich navy when you need it. Serpentine Genuine is new for this, and it's a very light pale green and a lot of times I found that that's helpful when I'm doing landscapes. My sap green can't live without my green appetite genuine. I can't live without that texture. It's just gorgeous and I've added perylene green which is nice and dark. I'll be showing you more about that and some of these other colors. Payne's blue gray makes gorgeous clouds and neutral tint will take anything and knock it down a couple of colors make it a shadow color. Nickel Azo, I'm going to show you in a minute. It is, it does some interesting things. It's got interesting properties to it that I want to play with. So I want to put it right up front in my palette. New Gamboge, again from the Essentials, adore that color. Aussie Red Gold, really fun. And even though in the large swatch it didn't get dark, it you can see in my little swatch in the palette it gets dark. Yellow Ochre plays beautifully with Moon Glow. Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber are replacing my Quin Burnt Orange and my Sepia. They're just a little bit warmer colors and they have more granulation to them and stuff. Paroline Maroon is added for a dark red, so then I don't have to mix one. Anthraquinoid Scarlet and Pearl Scarlet have both stayed in. Anthraquinoid is more transparent. Pearl Scarlet is semi-transparent, but I, I keep them in there and I'll talk a little bit more about it later for a reason, even though they're really close to each other. Quin Rose, of course, delicious color, mixes beautiful purples. Imperial Purple has jumped in here, and Moon Glow, of course, because it's wonderful. So I'm going to do a comparison of the old colors versus the new colors. On the left is the transparent Pearl Orange that I used to use, and then the Anthraquinoid Scarlet and the Pearl Scarlet. So there's, I don't know if you can tell on the screen, there's more oranginess to the transparent Pearl Orange. Sepia was the old one and it's been replaced by Burnt Umber and I can add more to these colors and I'll add, make another swatch here and add some of the neutral tint to the Burnt Umber and you can kind of see how that would play out. You just add a little bit of neutral, neutral tint, probably too much to try to make it match the sepia, but it's possible to make these colors darker. So what I opted for in a lot of cases was going for things that are gonna work better for me in the long run, because there were colors in my old palette I just really never touched. So there you go. Uh, this is the Quin Burnt Orange. And I've replaced that with Burnt Sienna. I just like the richness of it. And I can always add some yellowish colors to it to kind of brighten it up a little bit if I need that. But I tend to use the darker more. I, I tend to use more natural colors than I do cra crazy bright colors. So a lot of, a lot of colors are just taking a, not a step down, a little notch down. That is the Permanent Yellow Deep, which is now replaced with the Aussie. Aussie red gold. And you can see Aussie gets more of a difference from the dark to the light. So I have more options with it. And of course, New Gamboge because it's yellow and I adore it. This was manganese blue and I loved the granulation in it, but I didn't like how it moved very much. So I replaced it with two colors. One is the iridescent electric blue and the other is cobalt teal blue. Cobalt teal will do more granulation and the iridescent blue is a little bit more like a I guess more of a pure sky blue kind of color. And then the purples. I swapped out this Carbazole Violet 
in exchange for imperial purple. They're really close. The carbazole is more blue and the imperial is a little bit more on the red side. You can always add a little bit to one or the other to change them up. And this was lunar black, which does great granulation, but I found I really didn't use black all that often. So I decided for things that are gonna be more useful in mixing with other stuff like neutral tint, so you can see the difference in color, it's a little bluer, and then Payne's blue gray. You can see how gorgeous that would be for clouds and cloudy skies and mountains and all sorts of things. And then this is Moon Glow, which is an amazing, amazing color. I just love it. It's very muted, but I really, really do like it a lot. A quick view of my greens and why I've chosen them. This Serpentine Genuine is a nice granulating color and it stays really soft. And I found that I was always trying to water down my sap green to get that kind of light green. And what I generally think of in, in all colors, get something that you mix a lot. So if you find yourself mixing something a lot, go buy that tube and otherwise mix them. Because why have a gajillion tubes or a gajillion pans when you can mix a color? So that, uh, so we have serpentine, sap, uh, green appetite, and then this is perylene green because I'm always trying to add some deep dark shadows to my trees and I, I have such trouble mixing a dark, nice dark color and that's going to give me a lot of options to just be able to add some darks to some of these others and it's got a different flavor to it too so it's going to have a little more blue in it. Now for that nickel azo. I'm gonna throw some uh, speed paints out here on the paper so I can show you what nickel azo does in contrast to other things. So that's a little nickel azo on the top and just watch as it slowly moves out into the pigment. Sometimes it moves faster, sometimes slower, depending on how much water's in it, but it always does this gorgeous, really soft burst. And as it dries, it, it dries fairly soft. It doesn't make big finger blooms into things. But by contrast, this is what New Gamboge does. It doesn't do that movement. So Nickel Azo loves to move. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I want to play with it. So that's why I've kept it front and center in my main palette. I have lots of other palettes that I'm going to be talking about. But like my main palette, I picked the things that I want to be intentionally playing with in the coming year or so. Lots of these colors are also going to be on my dot card. I'm redoing the dot card. But look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. Isn't that pretty? The one on the top is the Nickel Azo. Bottom is New Gamboge. I've said for years now that the best set to start with is the Daniel Smith Essentials. Uh, it has two yellows, two reds, two blues, a warm and a cool, and mixes an umpteen range of colors. You can mix all kinds of stuff with just these six, and a bunch of my classes are based on this set. However, they have these little sets now, and I want to talk about them in more detail and what I've done to modify them to make them for, work for me. They come with six colors in them already, and the rest are blank pans, and these bottom six uh, in the center bottom are the ones that it comes with. So I've made little pictures to see what I could do with them. How far could I stretch them? And there's a bright red, yellow, and blue and a muted red, yellow, and blue. And you can do tons with them. And I have added other colors to this palette that work for me because I thought of this, if it's supposed to be a sketcher set, I might go to a city and do some some sketching of buildings. So I included colors that I might use for buildings and and stone and sidewalks and a little bit for trees and that kind of stuff. I pick things with textures. And that's because that's what I'm thinking of for this set. You can choose whatever you want this set to be. So I would recommend getting it, seeing what colors you mix out of your yellow, red, and blues. And what do you mix most often? And then go buy a tube of just that one and fill in another one of those spaces. This is another of the sets. This is the Earth set, and it comes again with those middle six, middle bottom six. And here's something that I did with those middle bottom six. And it, again, they're very new, neutral colors, muted colors. So if you like to do animals, if you like to do anything that has that kind of coloration in it, buildings and rocks and that kind of stuff, this works great. 
I've added other things to it that have a lot of texture to them. So for me, that might be the feeling that I want to generate when I pull out this particular palette. And I'm going to just bounce around between the different palettes to challenge myself to use something. I have rhodonite. I bought rhodonite once, that pink one, never used it. And there's two purples in the left corner, that amazonite and jadeite. I want, jadeite does some interesting things. I want to play with it. And I'm putting them kind of front and center in these little palettes so I'll use them. Because right now I have all these palettes that are piled up and they're not set up in a way that made sense. So next up is the blues. And one of the things that you'll notice <laughs> is that I have little paint that sometimes gets on my plastic cover up here. I'm going to show you how I make my little swatch cards. But if I overfilled my paint, then the paint can get up there onto the plastic. All you do is wipe it off with a baby wipe. But here is a painting I did with just the blue colors that come in the set, those original six. And if you like to do seascapes and you like to do skies, this is an excellent set for that. Lots of wonderful things that you can do with it. So I thought, what would I add to a set of blues if I were to think about painting at the ocean side? And so I added colors that you might find at the beach. So I added some yellow sunshininess. I added some greens for grasses and browns for the sand and that sort of thing. And that's the kind of feel that I was trying to add to this particular palette just for that use. Then there's the floral set. It will be very popular for lots and lots of people. It comes with very bright colors. And this was painted with just the colors that are in there. And there are things that I did here where I wanted more of a, a red red rose and a pink rose. So I took some of the, the pink and I mixed it with some of the yellows to make that more reddish rose. So you can get a red in there. But what I decided to do was to add more floral colors into this particular palette. I added an orange. I added a more true red, more of a rose red to it. And, and lots of other colors that I thought would complement what's already here if I were to paint flowers and gardens. I tried some greens in here that I don't really use very often. That uh, spring green would be kind of interesting and fun. The wisteria and the lavender are new colors for Daniel Smith. I haven't played with them very much and I thought those would be fun to do as well. And, and again, cobalt teal blue is making it into a lot of these palettes. Uh, you may need to open them by the corner, just I wanted to show you that. Sometimes they get a little stuck. But next is the Colors of Inspiration palette. And these were not chosen to go together. And it was kind of funny when I talked to the people at Daniel Smith, I was like, what is the sense behind these? There's like all these strange purples together. And who would paint that much in purple? So I was trying to think of things I could paint in purple. And I found all the purple vegetables I could find. And some of them are like blackish purple, but they have purple in them. So I included them so I could try to paint something with this grouping. So you can kind of get a feel for the flavors of these colors. And one of the interesting things that I discovered was that if you mix that green with some of the purples, you get brown. So there you go. <laughs> I added a couple other colors in here that I thought would be colors of inspiration, like just a pop of something crazy. Kyanite, I love. It's, it does beautiful uh, little sparkles in it. Opera pink is a fugitive color, so I don't use it very often, but I thought I'd like to play with it a little bit and try it. And then there's the ultimate mixing set. This one comes with all 15 colors in it, so it's more expensive. The colors were chosen by Jane Blundell, but you also get a second completely empty palette. And I have put some of my colors from my main palette, the first one I showed you, into this one. So I had to choose and make a smaller list. This is the painting that I did from Jane's colors, so. though. And so you can see the, the kind of variety that you get from all of the different colors that she's chosen. She has lots of artistic science behind why she chose them. You can go follow Jane and learn more color from her. I am not as into color in that detail of color as she is, but she's a great person to learn from as well. So I've cut a piece of paper that fits my palette. Whatever palette you have, just cut one to fit. And I'm making little marks that kind of align generally with the outsides of the little pan so I can make little pan sized uh, uh, rectangles and then drew some lines on it. Notice I didn't measure anything. I didn't get all real careful with it because it's just swatching to put in my palette. That's all it is. 
and I'm gonna paint a little bit of each color in there. Some people get real crazy and they wanna have dark pigment on one end of the swatch and lighter on the other. I don't stress about it because that takes more time for me and more thinking and I just like having the colors there so I can get an idea of what's in the palette really quickly and just fill them all in. And by the way, the silver brushes that I'm using, I'm mostly using a silver brush number eight. Links in the doobly-doo for that, as well as for all of the supplies used in here. After it's all dried, I just erased my little lines. So I only have a little bit of the lines trapped under the pigment and then took a, a black pen to write the words on there. You can use any black pen because you're not going to get this wet again. And write the colors on there. If you want to write the pigment inf information, you can. But then I just put tape over it, just regular old packing tape to seal it in. And then I use some sticky back stuff to put it into the top of the palette. You can put it in there and just pull it out when you're gonna use it. So you can mix color in the top of the palette, but this palette lid has an opening at the bottom so all the paint would slide out of it. So I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing that. I hope this has been helpful information for you. I do have a whole blog post with lots more information that has all the colors listed out and pictures of all of them so you can see the swatches if you decide to purchase any of those colors to add to your palette. All right, that is it for me. I will get going and I will see you next time here on YouTube. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, hit the bell beside it so you get notified of all of the videos coming up and visit the blog for more information and pinnable graphics. See you later, bye.